Okay, today's video, we're gonna go over the lead and lag window function within SQL Server. Uh, I am using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, uh, 2000, I think this is 2013, 2016. Uh, it should be applicable to, uh, I believe, all versions of uh, SQL, I think 2010 and above, maybe, maybe 2008. Um, essentially what the lag and lead function is gonna do is gonna give you, uh, it is a window function, so it, it will not return a value until after the output of what the query would typically output. So in cases, if you ever wanted to know what the next record was or the previous record uh, is, you can use this function. It's really handy, really clever. Um, you do have to be careful sometimes based on the size of the data set and on, on its performance. But for the most part, you should be pretty good. Okay, let's get started. So I'm um, working with a, a small data set right now for a company that runs a box service, like a subscription service, um, where you know people can subscribe their service and get a monthly box of uh, products. So uh, here you can see I, I sort of have my control. Um, the, these two customers, as well as this last customer will be my control, uh, since they only have one record, whereas I have one customer here who has four records. And that's where the lag and lead function is going to come in handy because I'm going to want to know what was the previous product code that the customer had prior to migrating or upgrading or downgrading to a different subscription service. All right, let's uncomment this out. I've already got this prepared. All right. My comment in kind of guy. Let's see. So we're going to run this. Um, I'm just going to run it, then I'll go over the function. So the lag function, um, you're gonna start out with lag. Um, you're gonna put in parentheses what you want it to return, what the previous or um, next value you want to output. Uh, you're gonna have your overstatement. And then the partition by is where the power and the function is, is uh, I'm gonna partition my key subscriber. So what it's gonna do is uh, for each, each key subscriber, uh, in this case, you know, there, there's only one here, so <clears throat> it's going to move on to the next one. And uh, then once it gets here, it's, it's going to partition by just these four records. I'm going to order by effective start date. I've already got that order down here. And it, the default in the lag or any win window function on the order by is ascending. I just have ASC in here, just a good habit, because uh, that right way it'll remind me if I need to descend it or not. I'm going to give it as alias and... We're gonna run this like we just did. I'm gonna show you. So in this first one, on as you would expect on key subscriber five, six, and eight, they're all nulls because there is not a second row for it to to go and check or go and search what the what the next value or the previous value was. So for Brian Murphy here, you can see on this record where he has box 365, what is the previous one? It's null because there is there is not one in the order by. It's the first record. Uh, the Next product, box 30, underscore D, right there. This record, sh the next record should be box 30. We got box 30, and then here on the previous, you can see it's working perfectly fine. Um, likewise, all the way through. Just to get a little bit more context into the window statements, in the event, uh, so this is also default comma one, which is one record lag or one record before, but it gives you the opportunity to do two, three, uh, so let's, we can run this with two. And as you can see for the lag, um, these first two are gonna be null because there's there's not two records before it. Um, and then the first the first one where it's available is this third, box 30. It's gonna go and search up this box 365. So that's another way you can, um, if you need to come up with some creative solution, um, very flexible. Another thing you can do is add another column or attribute to the partition by. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna partition by the product code. All right, let's copy that. We're gonna run this. And what this is gonna do is, um, we're gonna go look at key subscriber seven here because it's the only one that, 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 that will hold. Um, so we're partitioned by key subscriber seven as well as product code. So the only one where those two are alike are these two, right? And obviously uh, in this example, it's gonna return uh, the same thing because because we're we're returning. Uh, actually, we could do. Let's change this to uh, effective start date. All 
effective start date. And let's run. And so in this case, so we've partitioned by, we've got these you know, same product code, same key subscriber. Now we wanna see what is um, the next effective start date. And for this one, it's three, you know, on this record, we're looking at 3.8 to 4.8. The next record in this partition is 4.8. So just uh, that, that pretty much covers the window functions. If you guys have any questions or comments or would like to add any, anything that I missed in this video, please leave that down below. And thanks for watching, Professor Pitch. See you later.